So, so this is the uh, p-values, the mean. Uh, sigma sub p is the standard deviation. Okay. So for standard deviation, we need to know p. Okay. So p, we already calculated p here. So let's calculate this. So sigma sub p will be square root of 0.025. This is p. And then 1 minus p, 1 minus 0.025, okay, divided by uh, 200. So, uh, let me go to, yes. Okay. So this is the standard deviation. So, the following question, uh, which control limits would give an alpha risk of 0.03? So, again, let's draw our uh, normal distribution, okay? So, alpha risk is the sum of tail probabilities. So this is uh, 3%, okay? So that means each tail will have 1.5% or 0 0.015, 0 0.015, okay? And then, uh, um, so we need to have an uh, upper control limit here, a uh, lower control limit here, okay? So this is our standard normal distribution, Z, okay? This is 0.015, the belly probability is uh, 0.985, this is the belly probability, this is the tail probability, okay? So I get the tail probability from here. Tail probability, the belly probability, okay? So if you look up the uh, standard normal table, it's going to tell you that this corresponds to 2.17, okay? And uh, for the lower control limit, uh, the tail probability will be 0.015 because these should have the same tail probability, same tail probability. And then we see that these two tails have the same tail probability. And that means this is minus 2.17. So then uh, we can go from these two values to the upper control limit and lower control limit, okay? So for that, the uh, formula is this. So we calculated P, we calculated sigma sub P, so we know P, we know sigma sub P, uh, and then we need to know Z. 
So z is given here. Okay. Z comes from here. So then we can just plug in the numbers and uh, calculate the upper and lower control limits. Okay. Does, does this make sense? So, uh, so I'm not uh, going to belabor this point. Would you like me to write out? You know what? Let me do this. Let me write this out. Okay. So, um, so let's calculate. This is the upper control limit. P is 0 0.025 plus uh, 2.17 times uh, 0.01104 is roughly equal to 0 0.048. The lower control limit is the same, P plus Z is minus 2.17 times 0.01104 is going to be roughly 0.001. So these are the uh, upper and lower control limits. So this is uh, 0.048, this is 0.001. So part E asks what alpha risk um, would control limits of 0 0.47 and 0 0.003 provide. So, so let's uh, look at this normal distribution again. Okay. So the mean is 0.025, okay, uh, sigma sub p is 0.01104, roughly, 0.047, okay, 0.003, okay. So we need to find out these tail probabilities. So this will be alpha over 2 and this will be alpha over 2. So let's go to standard normal. Okay. So let's find this uh, z value. Z value is X minus P, X minus P, uh, divided by sigma sub P. So, uh, this is the mean, P, P is the mean, so this is the standard deviation. We don't divide by the sample size, because we already divide by the sample size to find sigma sub P. We don't want to divide by the sample size twice, okay? So, uh, so point, 047 minus 0.025 divided by 0.01104. Okay. So this is going to be 0.022 divided by 0.011. Roughly, 
and this is going to be 2. So z is going to be 2. And the tail probability, when we look at the uh, standard normal distribution, okay, 2, uh, the belly probability will be 0 0.9772. The tail probability will be 1 minus 0.9772, which is equal to 0 0.0228. So if this tail probability is 0 0.0028, this tail probability will be also 0 0.0228. And so, so for the this is for the upper control limit. Let's do this for the. Uh, lower control limit. Okay. So for uh, the lower control limit, z equals 0 0.003 minus 0 0.025 divided by 0 0.01104. Okay. So this is going to be minus 0 0.022 divided by uh, 0.01104. It's going to be roughly minus 2. So for uh, the lower control limit, 0.003, we get a z value of uh, minus 2. Okay. So we get that z value of minus 2. So we see this is 2, this is negative 2. Because of symmetry, this tail prob probability must also be 0 0.0228. Because of symmetry, 2 minus 2, same tail probability. And then, uh, since minus 2 corresponds to this lower control limit, this must also be 0 0.0228. So then the alpha value will be the sum of these two values. So let's do the rest of the uh, rest of the question. So uh, we're skipping part F because it's crossed out. Part G. Suppose that the long-term fraction defective of the process is known to be given. 2%. Okay. What are the values of the mean and the standard deviation of the sampling distribution? Okay. 
So for that, uh, P equals 0 0.02. mean is P equals 0.02. Sigma sub P equals square root uh, P 1 minus P divided by square root of N. Okay. So that means 0.02 times 1 minus 0.02 divided by 200 in the square root. This is roughly 0 0.01. Okay. So is, is everybody clear? on how I calculated the P and the standard deviation. Okay. So then, uh, the last part, part H, asks for uh, control limits. Uh, it says two sigma. Okay, two sigma means z equals two. If you say if you see two sigma, it means z equals two. Okay, let's calculate the uh, upper and lower control limits. The formulas are as follows, P plus Z times sigma sub P, P minus Z times sigma sub P. Okay. P is 0 0.02 plus minus, uh, Z is two because it says two sigma, two sigma here, times sigma sub p, sigma sub p is about 0 0.01, 0 .01. and so roughly the, uh, so this is going to be lower control limit going to be zero uh, point oh four. Yeah, so uh, is everybody clear on this? of time, okay, I'm going to skip question six, okay, uh, because it's the same uh, idea. Let's look at uh, question seven, okay. Question seven says the postmaster of a small western town receives a certain of number of complaints each day, each day about mail delivery. Determine three sigma control limits using the following data. Okay, so on day one, there were four complaints, on day two, ten complaints, on day three, fourteen, etc. So here, we don't have a sample. Okay, we have a product which is a mail delivery. So we provide the same service 
every day. But every day, the same service has a different number of defects. Okay. So this is one product, this is one product, this is one product. Every day is a different product. Okay. And uh, every day, uh, there will be a different number of defects. Okay. So this is uh, the uh, C chart. Okay. And the formulas are like this. So the C ratio, you have number of total items. Okay. So the number of total items is 14 because we have 14 days. And number of total defects is the number of total uh, defects for every day. Okay. So to calculate this, what I do is uh, number of total items is 14. Okay. And the number of defects is 110 over 14 days. And this gives me a ratio of roughly 7.86. Seven point eight six. Let's use the formulas for the upper and lower control limits. Okay. So uh, the formula says C plus Z times square root of C. Uh, what is Z? Okay. Uh, Z is given in the problem itself. So if you look at the problem, it says uh, three sigma control limits. Okay. It says uh, three sigma control limits. So what that means is that we need to set z equal to 3. So, uh, so the upper control limit will then be 7.86 plus 3 times square root of 7.86. This is going to be 16. Point twenty seven upper control limit lower control limit let's calculate that lower control limit uh, seven point eight six minus three times seven point eight six equals uh, minus zero point five five okay so the lower control limit comes out to be a negative number. However, when, when we are counting the number of defects, the lowest number of defects can be zero. But you cannot have a negative number of defects. So we set this to zero. So uh, we cannot have a negative number of defects. So we set the lower control limit to zero. So uh, let's look at question eight. Okay. So it says, uh, given the following data for the number of defects per spool of cable, uh, using three sigma limits. Okay. Uh, so I cross this out. So again, we have a C chart. 
Okay. Uh, what is a spool of cable? Sometimes you see on the side of the road big rolls of steel cable. So each one of them is one product. Okay. Some of these products have zero defects. Some of these products have one defect or two defects, three defects, etc. Again, we calculate the C ratio. Okay. So we add these up, total number of defects divided by 14. That will be our C ratio. And when we add these up, so the uh, number of defects adds up to uh, uh, 21. Okay. The C ratio will be there are 21 defects in 14 uh, in 14 products. So C ratio will be 1.5. And then we can use the uh, formula sheet. Okay. We can use the formula sheet. Um, to calculate the upper and lower control limits. So uh, the upper control limit will be 1.5 plus 3 times square root of 1.5 because 3 sigma was given in the question. The lower control limit will be 1.5 minus 3 times square root of 1.5 Okay, so this is going to be roughly 5.17. Uh, this is going to be minus 2.17. Again, this cannot be zero. I'm sorry, this cannot be negative. So we set it to zero. Okay. So I think... This, uh, so I, I have done question nine, but uh, it's about the same ideas, and, and I think you can do it on your own. So are there any questions, comments? Yes? Uh, my first question is, uh, when you ask about the, the alpha value, the alpha risk, that's always the area of two tails, right? Yes, alpha means the sum of two tail probabilities. And the other question is, uh, for question 5D, how did you get uh, the 0 0.015, the 15%, uh, as the probability for the tails? OK, um, so I'd like to refer back to the notes. Question five, let me go to the questions. D, oh. five D. D. D, five D, yeah. okay. All right, so here, alpha risk is 0.03, so that's 3%, right? So, but that's two tails combined, 3%. Yep. So each tail will have 1.5%. Right, that makes sense. Okay, thank you. Yes, question? Um, what's the difference between P chart and C chart? Sorry. What's the difference between P chart and C chart? Okay, what's the what difference between. Okay, like what's, what's, what's the difference between P chart and C chart? If you are confused during the exam, you can ask me, and I will tell you which one it is, P-chart or C-chart. But in general, P-chart is uh, 0, 1. Okay? Uh, so if you're looking at the product, and if you're classifying it as defective or not defective, okay, that's, that's a P-chart. However, sometimes uh, you look at a uh, product 
you get multiple complaints. So one product has four defects, four complaints, ten complaints. So here, each product can have multiple complaints or defects. That's C chart. Okay. Any other questions? Yeah. Yeah. Um. For question four, just based on the question, like you mentioned that the sample size is five and not six, because six is n, right? For question four. Yes. So sample size is not how many samples you have. Okay. But how many it's in one sample. Yeah. Okay. In how many in one items in one sample. Okay. How big is the sample? The sample is five observations big. So sample size, how many items in one sample?